Welcome to Section 3. We've come a long way, and we have a long way to go, actually. In this section, we'll take a closer look at configuring Puppet Agents, more specifically performing tasks such as installing packages, making sure files exist, and starting services. By the end of this section, you will know how to code Puppet Manifests to contain resources that will be used to configure Puppet Agents. So let's get started. So let's go over in a bit more detail what you will know how to do. We will start with a description on the types of resources used in Puppet. I will continue with a more detailed demonstration on coding resources. Next up, you will learn important attributes for each important type of resource. Now almost done, I'll demonstrate how custom resource types can be defined, and I'll wrap up the section with a demonstration on how to abstract resources. Let's start up the topic of Puppet resources. Resources are key in configuring Puppet agents. Let's learn more about them. Now resources are best demoed and are very hard to describe. I'll try to describe them here, but my upcoming demo will do a better job in explaining them, I'm sure. Now resources describe what we want Puppet to use, such as installers, files, packages, services, etc. Now our core Puppet functionality are the resources. Think about the things that you use when you configure a server. Those are the resources. Now resources live in Manifest and in other places in Puppet. Now Manifest provide the resources used to configure a Puppet agent. Resources can be OS specific. Different machines and OSs support different things, such as support for services. Also, resources have attributes. Attributes are resource specific and describe the properties that collectively make up the resource. In this video, let's take a look at puppet resources. Now resources, quite simply, are objects or actions that puppet uses to configure something. And I'm being vague on purpose because whatever puppet really configures is up to you. So let's go over the basics of looking at resources. What you see here is a manifest. Now what we do is in a manifest or in a class or even in a module, what we can do is we can define resources and the actions to perform on them. Now there are just dozens and dozens of Puppet built-in resources and you also can define your own. But here we're gonna look at some built-in resources. Now basically a built-in resource has two different parts. It has the resource definition and it has attributes and the attributes are the property that makes up that resource. Now, for example here, in this code example, we have a package resource. We have a service resource. Now, the package resource is a software package that usually needs to be either required or downloaded or running. So here on line number 18, what I'm specifying in the package resource is we should have MySQL server actually referred to in Puppet. In this case, it's required and it has to be installed. But also, we can have resources that explain or basically define something that needs to be running, such as on line 24, we have a service resource. So we have a package resource and a service resource. And also on line 29, we have another package resource. So we have resources that define how the system is supposed to look. Now they're usually divided in the categories. Like for example, we have different kinds of running resources, such as a service resource, or maybe even like a daemon resource. And then we have the kinds of resources that define what should be installed. And those are usually defined as package resources and possibly even file resources because you see a file resource defined here on line number 35. So on line 35, basically what I'm doing is I'm defining a file resource and I have the path in there such as var www html info.php and underneath that I have some attributes or properties that define a little bit about that resource. So as I scroll up, we have some additional ones here. We have some installation resources, again, a package resource, a service resource, and on line number two, we have an execution resource. Now remember, resources don't always define something, they define things that can happen. So let me cut away and go to a puppet agent and write some commands to look at some resources. If we want to take a look at a resource, we could quite simply just type in puppet resource, the type of the resource, in this case, the user resource, and the name of it. So basically I'm getting puppet resource, 
user and then the name of the user. And then if that resource exists, we're going to see that resource echoed back to us. So I'm going to look at a different resource here, a user resource, look at Daemon, and we get the user resource, we get the name of it and the properties that make it up. So what you can do is if you want to look up these resources is you can just write the command to do so. So in this case, if I want to look at the package resource called Puppet, I can look at that as well. So if you want to look just in general about resources, a good command to use would be Puppet resource and just the generic help. And I'm just going to put in the runtime parameter help. And then you can list through this and look at all the different things that you can do with resources insofar as looking up the resources that are running on the system. So in this video, you learned about the Puppet resources and specifically we took a close look at the Puppet built-in resources.